Bill Clinton was always ready for what he saw was possible and was very effective in triangulation, figuring out ways to co-opt the Republicans on their own issues. There was a great need for an assault weapons ban in the late 80s and early 90s, and there was building public pressure for gun control of all sorts. It was the perfect moment for that sort of control. Bill Clinton was born in 1946 in Hope, Arkansas. His name then was not Bill Clinton, by the way. It was William Jefferson Blythe III. His father had been killed in a traffic accident three months before Bill came along. When Billy was about five years old, his mother started dating Roger Clinton, and they got married. It was not until Bill was almost a teenager when he decided to change his name to Bill Clinton. And ironically, it was right at a point when his mother was being beaten by his stepfather, who was an alcoholic. And Billy Clinton developed a need to sort of try to bring people together. He was the healer in the family because of the tensions between his stepfather and his mother. He was born with politics in his blood more than any figure I've ever encountered. There's this iconic moment when he was a junior in high school, when he went to Washington and manipulated getting off the bus so he would be the first to shake John F. Kennedy's hand in the Rose Garden. He always was trying to win people over and he had politics oozing from him. He was running for office in high school. He ran all four years of college at Georgetown when he was at Yale Law School. He spent an entire semester, not in New Haven, Connecticut, but in Texas, running George McGovern's presidential campaign down there. When Bill Clinton finished Yale Law School, he went back to Arkansas and almost immediately started running for Congress. He was considered the golden boy, even in that race, which he lost. But he did so well that it set him on the course for becoming the Attorney General of Arkansas. He set his sights on the governorship as soon as he was elected Attorney General. He was the second youngest governor at age 30, um, but he made several mistakes as a young governor. And so he became the youngest ex-governor in American history two years later and immediately started running again. Bill Clinton changed considerably after he got back into the governor's office. He was more moderate and he was re-elected governor many times, but he really sort of had his sights on Washington. Bill Clinton came today to win back the states Republicans once called their own. Bill Clinton was the first baby boom generation presidential candidate. And he definitely played that to the hilt. He played the saxophone. He liked to drive a Mustang. He was jogging around in these short shorts with his white meaty thighs. I think that Bill Clinton won that election because he was able to project an image of energy and new ideas and change. The American people have voted to make a new beginning. There had been mass shootings throughout American history, but uh, at the time when Clinton was becoming president, the use of assault weapons, rapid fire ability to kill as many people as possible in a short period of time was just sort of becoming part of the public consciousness. And Bill Clinton was not ever in the vanguard of the gun control movement, but he saw that there was public support for it. He could do the gun control bill in conjunction with crime bill that would emphasize that he was not soft on crime and yet go after gun control in the same period. And that was a way of co-opting the Republicans who, until that point, had sort of dominated the whole issue of crime and law and order. The barriers to getting an assault weapons ban done were the same that the barriers are always for any gun control legislation, which is the fear of members of Congress that if they support any gun control legislation, the NRA will raise and spend oodles of money to, to defeat them. So Clinton had to overcome some of those fears. This is too important an issue to be decided by strong arm lobbying tactics in Washington. The heart and soul of America is on the line. Compromises of some sort are almost always needed to get bills passed. You know, it's hard to draw the, that fine line of what weapon is just going to be used for the purposes of, of mass shootings and what's going to be used in the, in the normal course of, of hunting. Um, and so they had to compromise on most of those points. 
The point he would always try to make is that the opposition of the NRA leadership did not reflect the constituency, uh, most of whom he would say were good old boy hunters and fishers in places like where he grew up in Arkansas. He was pretty good at projecting himself as one of those good old boys and that this was just common sense control. As everyone knows, you don't need an Uzi to go deer hunting. You don't need an AK-47 to go skeet shooting. These are military weapons, weapons of war. They were never meant for a day in the country. They added the sunset clause to diminish the power of the NRA in opposing it. But of course, in retrospect, that sunset clause was disastrous. In that sense, it reflected a larger point about Bill Clinton's leadership, which was more tactical than long-term strategic. He was always sort of looking for the best way to survive um, in that moment, in that week, in that year. So some of his successes were transient. At this point, the assault weapons ban had some Republican support. And so, you know, as limited as that ban was in some respects, it was the single strongest piece of gun control legislation that's passed legislatively in the last 25 years. How many pieces of legislation can you say saved lives? The work of this country will never be over and no one will ever get to do it forever. Well, I think what people tended to not understand about Bill Clinton was that you couldn't separate the good from the bad. There was always a sense among people who supported him that they would say, if only, if only Clinton hadn't done these various things, he could have been a great president. But you can't say if only with Bill Clinton because the same drives that pushed him in positive ways pushed him in negative ways as well. He had this larger appetite. And so it was all Bill Clinton, whether he was doing something good or bad.